And you can see how that's a heavy burden to carry mm. of something that you feel is wrong, that is not, not going to go away, even though it is manageable and it does go away. You don't live without breaks. It's just like anything. Yes. Uh, but it was so uncomfortable the first time it happened. And I remember going to bath afterwards. They tell you to put Epsom salt and all that. And I just remember just crying to myself, just crying. Why me? You know, <laughs> getting into that mode. And then it went away. And then it was almost like, oh, okay. I went into a bit of a denial. And I almost thought I had cured myself. I did all these things like, I don't have it, like affirmations. It's not there. And because it, never, it didn't really come back again, in my mind, I thought, okay, I'm not someone with herpes anymore. Mm -hmm. And that continued for a long time. And I am not proud of that. And I think finally it came to a point where I had to take a deep look at myself and my relationships. Did you have another outbreak since? I had a hit here and there. And I it and even while I'd been in monogamous relationships, I I would hide it. Not proud of that. Mm. Like, and it was crazy as in some of those relationships, I would say, well, they're not showing up for me. They're not fully, you know, there. Yeah. And yet I started to ask myself, well, am I fully there? Am I fully showing up the way I want to be? Like, look, everything's a mirror for what you're putting out there. That's such a great point. Yes. Right. And so it was easier kind of as I was younger and going through that. But as I got older and it became clear, okay, I want to find that person. I want to start a family with, get married to a partner yes. for life. I finally confronted the fact that I needed to deal with this and, and really understand the trauma because it is a trauma, a physical, mental, and emotional trauma. And I never dealt with it. Not once in therapy had I brought it up. You didn't and even tell your therapist. I didn't even tell my therapist. <laughs> that's how much uh, in denial I was. And that, like, and that's how much I, shame is around this. It was my deep, dark secret. I said I was taking it to the grave. Like I was like, but then it became obvi more obvious as I was learning about these spaces and working on myself, my personal growth, really taking accountability for my life. I realized this is the a major thing that I had not processed properly or confronted properly. And I had to understand why. Mm -hmm. What did this diagnosis really mean to me as a person? Because as a diagnosis, once again, which is what the surprising thing, it's not a big deal. Yes. It's manageable. Mm -hmm. There's preventatives. There's like, yeah, when you get an outbreak, you take a pill, it goes away in five days. It's like anything. It's not ideal, but it's not going to kill you. But you know what will kill you is your mentality around it, mm -hmm. your emotional health around it. And when I finally reconciled that of what I was feeding myself, the, the hurt and pain I was keeping inside of me. Did of, you think about it every day? A lot of times when it was, it was amazing. And sometimes I didn't think about it and it was just like, Oh, I haven't thought about it in a while. That's the thing I have. Okay. And then what I, what I noticed is every time I would think about it or get anxious or stressful, just like a canker pops up or you get pimples, it would pop up. And so for me, a big part of coming to peace with, with it was also really being able to understand myself and my nervous system and like what actually brings me peace. Mm -hmm. So you could see how that's a, a huge, beautiful evolution. So there's a lot of beauty in this when I was ready to confront it. And my hope is it doesn't take people as long as it took me, but everyone has their own journeys. But in more people speaking out, they could realize, okay, I got this. And yes, I get to talk about it and feel it. It's not about keeping those feelings inside and process what this means to me. Because it could mean different things to different people depending on your socioeconomic backgrounds, your race, your gender, privilege, access to healthcare. I mean, it can mean so many different things to so many different people. And so my hope is that the other side of this and, and this experience for me has really forced me to look at myself and to understand my needs 
understand what intimacy really means to me. Mm-hmm. Consent and also understand that it's okay to be rejected. Wow. I think that that is such a powerful sentiment that is unique and a fresh take. I want you to unpack that more. What does that mean? Okay to be rejected? Yeah. A big fear or in approaching this and sharing with people, specifically because I'm I'm a cis hetero woman, men, my relationship with men was I won't be accepted and they're not going to want to be with me. Mm-hmm. Let's Let's step back. Betrayal in this case that happens when you don't disclose or you're not having these more intimate conversations. It's not just a betrayal to the person you're with. It's a betrayal to yourself Mm -hmm. because you are also assuming that someone's not going to love you for all of you. You're rejecting yourself. Yeah. You're basically, so then yeah, let's get to the next layer of that. How much is it someone else's rejection versus what you've already done to yourself? That's, that's heavy to carry that. And also to acknowledge that, that you've been, 